Good morning. We're at the start of a new year. It's a time when people ask one another about the year ahead. We ask questions like, what will 2022 bring for you? What are you hoping for in the year ahead? Do you have any resolutions? It's certainly a year when, when we may feel under pressure. Pressure as individuals, perhaps by some personal or family difficulties, perhaps by uncertainty about our purpose in life. Or pressure as a local church or the Church of England with the challenges we face in mission. Or pressure as a country or indeed the world with Covid. First century Judea, where John 1 is set, was a place under pressure, even under occupation. It was a time when the people of God were looking for hope and renewal, for freedom, for salvation, for a pure life, free from the impurity which the presence of Roman occupiers had brought. People were wondering whether now would be a time for change. One group had already withdrawn into the desert wilderness to live lives of purity as they understood it. So the priests and Levites of the Jewish people, whom we meet at the start of the passage, they were interested in renewal movements. That's why some of them come to John with questions about who he is. What they ask about his identity can help us to think about the year ahead. They ask who he is, and especially they ask, what do you say about yourself? What do you say about yourself? These are entirely fair questions. John is out there in the wilderness, and as we know from other Gospels, he's getting a lot of attention. Matthew 3 verse 5 says, Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the, around the Jordan were going out to him. So he's attracting attention. The priests and Levites ask him whether he is the Messiah, Elijah or the prophet. They know he's going to understand them. John's world is the world of the Levites. His father, Zechariah, was a Levite. It was while Zechariah was performing his temple duty in Jerusalem, after all, that John got his name. So this John is asked, who are you? What do you say about yourself? It's a question Christians should hope to be asked so that we can give an explanation which will help others. Will you explain yourself? Why are you living as you are? The way John answers the question is fascinating. If we listen, we will learn how we should answer the question ourselves, personally and as a church. Two things we can learn. First, John talks about Jesus. And second, John talks about baptism. First, he talks about Jesus. Verse 20, he did not fail to confess, but confess freely, I am not the Messiah. What a strange answer. They ask him who he is. There's this big build up. He didn't fail to speak out. That's what confess means here. He spoke out freely. And what did he say? I am not the Messiah. Instead of explaining himself by saying, I am the son of Zechariah the Levite, he says who he is not. Then we get the same with Elijah and the prophet. John says who he is not. All three of these were expected to bring renewal to the people of God by baptising people, bringing the purification for which many of the people longed. Now, the priests and Levites are understandably not satisfied by John's answer. So they, pre they, they press him with the big question we're focusing on. What do you say about yourself? And how does John speak about himself? Again, it's strange. He talks about himself talking about 
the Lord. Verse 23, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. John talks about himself, yes, but in relation to someone else who is coming, the Lord. He is the voice announcing the arrival of the Lord, telling others to make things ready to prepare the way. And more than this, the words he uses are not his own words, but those of the Lord through Isaiah. In effect, John says, I am who the Lord says I am. So how does he answer the question? The question, what do you say about yourself? He explains himself in relation to the Lord and through the word of the Lord. So the question comes to us today. What do you say about yourself? John discovered how to respond by letting the scriptures shape his vision and by seeing himself in relation to Jesus. As we look ahead to the coming year, personally, as a church, here's the question. What do you say about yourself? Perhaps someone says to you, how is this year looking for you? What are you hoping for in 2022? How we answer matters. It matters to each one of us personally. Jesus tells us in Luke 7, 28, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John, John the Baptist, yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. If we're Christians, we are part of the kingdom of God that Jesus brought, but which John only glimpsed. Like John, but greater than John, we are called to be messengers of the gospel, preparing the way for the Lord. How? Well, like John, we all have a voice. So how will you, how will we be a voice? pointing to Christ this coming year. Whether we've joined Grace Church in 2021, 2020, or way back in 2019, the question is the same. How will we, how will you be a voice preparing the way for the Lord? Well, how did John do it? We remember first that John was a voice by his way of life. He showed God's word by being in the wilderness rather than the temple. His words would not have drawn attention to the lamb without his way of life. Our voice too will be heard in light of how we live in 2022. Will we live a life of hope and costly love for others as John did? What repentance is needed in our lives for that to happen? What needs to stay the same or be enriched? Whatever it is, let's seek God for his grace. So how are we to be a voice for Christ? Let's think practically. In our church, a gentle word of encouragement, a kindly welcome, in the way we pray together, in our Bible study and missional communities, being around at Cap Cafe or Grace Minis, meeting up with that person for a coffee, inviting someone to Hope Explored. What about beyond the church, in everyday faith, wherever we are? Think of where you will be through January, at home, at work, chatting with neighbours, friends, family, whoever it is, in everyday settings, How can we be a voice that speaks of ourselves in a way which points to Christ? All of this is part of preparing the way of the Lord, pointing to his coming among us and his coming again. It could be as simple as someone asking, how are you? Or how was your Christmas? And then responding honestly and thoughtfully about how Christ is making a difference in your life. 
So John is asked, what do you say about yourself? He first talks about himself, talking about Jesus. He talks about Jesus. The call to us is to bear witness to Jesus, to talk about our lives, the church, our nation, the world, whatever it is in relation to Jesus. So that's the first thing. The second, John talks about baptism. The question is still, what do you say about yourself? In response, John the Baptist talks about two baptisms. The baptism with water, which John performs and Jesus himself receives, and the baptism with the Holy Spirit, which John is unworthy to perform and which the Lord God alone gives to the church. Understanding how these two baptisms are connected will help us to be a missional community as a church. So have a look down at verses 30 to 31. John knows Jesus is far greater than him. He tells those around him that he came baptising so that... Jesus could be revealed to Israel. He tells them, verse 32, that when he baptised Jesus, the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus from heaven, from God the Father in heaven. And that God, who had sent John, told John that this Jesus, the Son of God, would baptise others with the Holy Spirit. And that's how it happened. Once Jesus was equipped with the Spirit, he was revealed to Israel. He went about his public ministry, healing, teaching, loving service, calling people to follow him, and then dying, rising from death, ascending into heaven, pouring out the Spirit upon the whole church, the baptism of the Spirit. So how are the water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism connected? In other words, how do those who receive John's baptism get to have the Holy Spirit baptism? Only through the Lamb of God. Verse 29, this is the one whom John points to. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. What a moment. The word made flesh in person. Jesus appears on the scene for the first time. He is the one who can lead the people from John's baptism to the baptism in the Holy Spirit. How? Well, God taught Israel to trust that as animals were sacrificed, the sin of Israel would be taken away. And now that faith is being Fulfill that promise that God made. Jesus is the Lamb of God who will be sacrificed to take away the sin of the whole world, including Israel. So those who have begun with the water baptism, preparing through repentance, can now go on to put their faith in the death and resurrection of the Lamb, through whom Sins are taken away. And then, free from the impurity of sin, they can receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit. This is the way Jesus answers the Jewish people's longing for purity. By purifying the people and astonishingly sending them to the whole Gentile world, to the Romans, to baptise them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is a huge missional moment. No longer is the Spirit just for a select few Israelite prophets. Now the Spirit is for the many from every race. So what? So what for today? So what for us as a missional church in 2022? Jesus explains later in John's gospel what this all means. John 7, 
37 to 39. Do you turn to it if you'd like to. John 7, 37 to 39. This is what Jesus says. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from out of their heart. By this, he meant the spirit from whom, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So those who have faith in Jesus receive the baptism of the spirit. The rivers of renewal spring up in a person's innermost being, quenching their thirst. But then wonderfully, the spirit flows from within them out to others. And as according to the promises, it's, it's, it's out to others from every nation. Then, by the end of the gospel, after Jesus has died and risen again, after he has been glorified, as it says in John seven thirty nine, after he has been glorified, after it's clear that he's the Messiah, what do we see? Jesus giving the Spirit. John 20, verse 22, Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. So to be a missional Holy Spirit baptised church is about our inner renewal. It's about us forgiving and being forgiven. It's about the church being sent just as Jesus was sent. And that's all possible because Jesus, the Lamb of God, has taken away the sins of the world. What do you say about yourself? Renewal, forgiveness, sent because the Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world. And amazingly, what happens when the church is sent, think on to Acts and the giving of the Spirit at Pentecost, the mission of the church. Acts 6 verse 7, it says, So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Perhaps, we do not know, that group included some of these from the same group who first met John the Baptist. It almost certainly included those who had been baptised by John. So back to our question. As we face the coming year, personally as a church, what do you say about yourself? John, John answered by speaking eagerly about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, about forgiveness of sins. He talked about himself in his own ministry in relation to Jesus giving the Spirit. He did this because he saw in Jesus the one from whom the Holy Spirit would be poured out on all flesh, bringing glory to God. So what for us, as I come to the finish, we too should talk about ourselves in relation to baptism. If you've not yet been baptised in water, this is the way to start the Christian journey. John's water baptism pointed forward to the water baptism which Jesus himself taught the church in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus's water baptism is now available to all. And along with this baptism, we who are Christians should seek the fullness of the Spirit. If you're here today and you're not sure whether you've been baptised in the Holy Spirit, come to Christ and ask him. There were those in the book of Acts who had received John's baptism, but had never even heard there was a Holy Spirit. Perhaps you're in that situation of having begun to identify with things around Jesus while never truly receiving him as the Lamb who takes away your sin. In repenting and believing in Jesus as the one who died and rose again for you, you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Perhaps now you're already following Jesus. Well, you have been baptised with the Holy Spirit. Our role now is to let the Spirit flow from us to the world, starting here in Cowley in 2022. We've got to seek that inner renewal 
uh, which is talked about in Galatians 5 in terms of the, the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, we're not talking about that chapter today or indeed 1 Corinthians where it talks about the gifts of the Spirit. We could explore that on another occasion. But our vocation now as Christians going about our daily lives is to point to the Lamb in every way, in every way we can, and encourage all to be baptised with water and with the Holy Spirit. So here's our question. What will we say about ourselves in 2022? Let's explain ourselves in relation to Jesus. Let's personally and as a church be a voice in word and deed, preparing the way for the Lord. Let's hope that people from all the world will be baptised with water and with spirit. Let's pray for the Spirit's work in us, for renewal, for forgiveness of sins, for the glory of the Lamb of God. Amen.